Continuation Application of the Perfect Redemption Plan, Part 5, page 144, chapter 1-3, Power Gifts, 1-3a, The Gift of Faith. The gift of faith is not just normal faith, it is trusting God in spite of the opposition or the negative report or the impossibility staring at you. Think of it this way. When a building is burning, the majority of people head to the nearest exit door, but there are a few people who decide to run into the burning building. When the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center were attacked in 9-11, the firefighters knew that it was not safe for them to go into the second tower to try to save lives, but they did it anyway. The second tower fell on those firefighters. They were heroes. The gift of faith is when you stand for the word of God and become an example for people around you of how we ought to follow God no matter what. The heroes of faith listed in Hebrews 11 have all exhibited the gift of faith. Father Abraham against hope believed in hope, for Sarah was advanced in age and her womb was barren. He did not look at what his flesh or medicine was teaching him, but believed God would open the womb of Sarah and she would conceive Isaac. Hebrews 11 verse 11 to 12 Many couples exhibit the gift of faith like Father Abraham. I have a close friend of mine who has been waiting for the fruit of the womb for ten years. His wife had six miscarriages. They questioned their faith. They had many opportunities to divorce, or he had many opportunities to do, like Father Abraham, to have a Hagar. But he refused to have a Hagar. The tenth year his wife became pregnant and gave birth to a wonderful baby boy that they named Isaac. Father Abraham also exhibited the gift of faith when he left his country of birth to go to a land unknown to him that he had never been to before because God spoke to him. He left everything behind to go to a place where nobody knew him and he knew nobody there. Hebrews 11 verse 8 to 10 Whenever you leave everything to follow Jesus, not knowing where he is taking you, that is exhibiting the gift of faith. We've all exhibited it the day we were born again. None of us knew what the Christian walk would be like, but we said, yes, Jesus, we will follow you. We heard about the promises of God, and some people told us their experience with Jesus, but we had never experienced Jesus for ourselves. Yet we decided to leave all the other idols we had to serve one God through Jesus Christ. Whenever God tells us to leave our job or our career and start a new job or a company, which we have never done before, we would rather remain an employee of someone than being our own boss. But when we decide to act on the word of God and quit our job to start a business at the instruction of God, it is exhibiting the gift of faith. When we are professional and God tells us to become a preacher, we can decide to say no, or we can act on what he told us, and that is a gift of faith. I believe marriage is a great example of the gift of faith. Sometimes you do not know your spouse or his people. You do not have the same upbringing, and you do not know what he will turn out to be when you are married. But you decide to join yourself to him, to leave your father and mother, to be joined to a total stranger. Even if you knew the person or his parents, nothing guarantees that he will be like his parents in marriage. You need to believe that God will be with you in that marriage and that he has kept the better one for the end, that your best is yet to come. John 2 Enoch also exhibited the gift of faith. He left us an example of how a mere mortal can walk in intimacy with God. He so pleased God that God decided that he would not taste death but ascend alive into heaven. Hebrews 11 verse 5 
He has become an example of us born-again Christians who will be caught up into heaven alive if Jesus comes today. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 13 to 18 Jude also understood that the experience of Enoch was a shadow of what would happen to Christians at the second coming of Jesus and says, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, also prophesied to these, saying, Behold, the Lord came with myriads of his saints to do judgment against all and to rebuke all the ungodly of them concerning all their ungodly works, which they ungodly did and concerning all the hard things ungodly sinners spoke against him. Jude 1 verse 14 to 15 So we also decide to exhibit the same faith of Enoch by walking in the Spirit, which is doing the word of God, so that we will always please God like Enoch did. For without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to him must believe that he is, and is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 verse 6 Yes, we have the same hope that Enoch had, because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is no respecter of persons. If we walk in faith like Enoch, when Jesus comes in his glory, we will also be caught up to him, and we will receive the same reward Enoch did. Whenever you are doing the written word of God, you are exhibiting the gift of faith like Enoch, and pleasing God, for you could be walking in the flesh, but you chose to walk in the spirit. Abraham again exhibited the gift of faith when he agreed to offer up Isaac, whom he loved, as a burnt offering to God, when God asked him. He believed that God was able to raise Isaac even from the ashes. Hebrews 11 verse 17 to 19 Whenever you believe God and obey Him, even to the peril of what is dear to you, believing that God is able to raise from the dead what you willingly lost, is faith. You are exhibiting the gift of faith. God told some people to leave their job and go into ministry full time, and God would provide for them, and they acted on the word of God. That is the gift of faith. For many refused to obey, for they loved their job and did not believe that God was able to meet their needs. Not everybody is called into full-time ministry. In fact, Paul advises us to work so that we can present the gospel free of charge. Yet God sometimes calls some people to full-time ministry. Paul, for instance, was told by the Holy Spirit that he needed to go to Rome, but the journey would take him first to Jerusalem, where he would suffer many things from the Jews and be bound. So brethren tried to stop him because they did not want him to suffer. But Paul told them, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts 21 verse 13 Many times God asks us to do something, and we know that it is dangerous, yet the Spirit of God in us gives us the boldness or the gift of faith to do it, even if it means jeopardizing our life to the point of death. Judges 5 verse 18 of such were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who refused to bow and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar made. They were ready to be put into the burning, fiery furnace, believing that God whom they served was able to deliver them even from that burning, fiery furnace, and even if God did not, they would not bow. God delivered them in the midst of that fire. Daniel 3 Daniel was also put into the den of lions because he refused to stop worshipping God for a month to worship the idol that the king made. The God whom he served was able to deliver him from the mouth of those lions in that he sent his angel into the den to shut the mouths of those lions. Daniel 6 in the first century, many Christians were fed to lions by the Emperor Nero of the Roman Empire, who hated Christians because they said Jesus is their king. 
Those Christians refused to deny Jesus and were martyred. Even today, in our century, all over the world, many Christians are persecuted and their very life is threatened because they have made Jesus their Lord and Saviour. They are set ablaze in churches, they are bombed, they are disowned from their families, but regardless of what they go through, they refuse to deny Jesus, they exhibit the gift of faith. Stephen preached Jesus to the peril of his life. He could have kept quiet and denied Jesus in front of his accusers, but he was filled with the Spirit of God, and the gift of faith was in operation in him, so he preached and they stoned him to death. Act 7 One night I was in the streets of Manchester, England. It was around 11 p.m., I saw a homeless drunkard sitting on one of the benches in the street. So I came close to him, sat by his side and started preaching Jesus to him. Two junkies, who were prostitutes, came and sat on the same bench behind me. And when they heard us talking about Jesus, they were not happy. They started to kick me with their foot on my back. So when I turned around, they told me that it was their spot, and me being there with my Jesus was scaring off all their customers. I should move elsewhere. I refused to move. They were still kicking me in the back, and I ignored them and kept on preaching. So one of them said to me that she had a knife in her purse, and she would slit my throat with it if I did not stop preaching Jesus. I discerned that it was not just the heroine speaking through her, but the demons inside her that were manifesting. So I said to the two of them, You have demons in you. I speak to you demons in the name of Jesus. Come out of them immediately in the name of Jesus. So I turned and gave them my back, not fearing that they would take their knife to try to slit my throat. In less than a minute they took off and left us. That homeless person told me he had never seen those prostitutes leave so quickly. They used to kick him every day so that he had to move elsewhere. I told him they had demons, so Jesus commands me to cast out those demons in his name. I am not stupid either to just go where people would try to kill me. I believe in my heart that the glory of the Lord is my rear guard. Isaiah 58 verse 8 and I read in 1 Kings 13, the king of Israel stretched out his hand to arrest the young prophet, and the hand of the king withered immediately, and he begged the young prophet to pray for his hand to be healed, and the young prophet did so. I have read it and believed it, for a prophet is just God's spokesman. I was sharing the word of Jesus, the prophet and the son of God, so if she tried to stretch out her hand with a knife to slit my throat, her hand would wither, even before her knife could get close to me. Our faith is based on nothing else but the written word of God. God will deliver us according to his written word, therefore we need to know the word of God and stand on it. Psalm 119 verse 154 and 170. The three friends of Daniel in the burning fiery furnace were standing on the written word of Isaiah which says, Now thus says the Lord God who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by your name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame kindle on you. Isaiah 43 verse 1 to 2 David fought against a lion and a bear to rescue the sheep of his father Jesse. David said to Saul, Your servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after it, and struck it, and delivered the lamb out of its mouth. And when it rose against me, I caught it by the beard, and struck it, and killed it. Your servant killed both the lion and the bear. 
And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. And David said, Jehovah, who has delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and may Jehovah be with you. 1 Samuel 17, verse 34 to 37. Normal people run for their life when they see a lion or a bear. David had the opportunity to run away too, after all his father had other sheep. If one was stolen, there were many others. Why risk your life for one sheep? All the army of Israel and Saul the king were hiding for fear of Goliath the giant, but David the teenager, who was not a military guy, fought the giant and defeated him. Even in the life of Christians there are threatening situations, and we can decide to run for our life and abandon the sheep God entrusted to us to be devoured by the devil, or we can decide to cast out those demons in the name of Jesus and deliver the sheep. We can decide to single-handedly kill all the Philistines while all Israel and its army are running far away. David did it, and Samson did it too. I remember the Lord said to me, Come up to me on the mountain, and be there, and I will give you the tablets of stone, and the law and the commandments which I have written, that you may teach them. Exodus 24 verse 12 I understood that he was calling me to fast for forty days and forty nights, without food, only drink water. But I was afraid of doing that, so I did not obey. I said to the Lord, I've never done it before. The longest I've gone without food day and night, only drinking water, was five days. So I said to God, I will do a fasting of milk and honey. I will only drink one kg of natural yogurt with honey every day. I did that fast of milk and honey for sixty days and sixty nights. But it was not what the Lord asked me to do. So... The word of the Lord came again to me on the sixtieth day of that milk and honey fast, day and night, saying, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, afterward he was hungry. Matthew 4 verse 1 to 2 I went to church on that Sunday, and the general overseer of the New Covenant Church was sharing his experience when he fasted for forty days and forty nights without food, only drinking water. I knew that the message was directly for me, and I would not be disobedient to God this time around. After the service, we were invited to eat with him, but as I was eating my first meat after sixty days and sixty nights of milk and honey, I was convicted that I needed to do what the Lord told me to do. When I came home, I said to God, you see, it's winter. The winter of 2009 was a hard winter with heavy snow. I said to God, I think it is not reasonable to fast for forty days and forty nights without food, but only water in this hard winter. I turned my computer on and was watching a Christian program, and the preacher read one scripture. Beniah, the son of Jehoiada from Kabzeel, a son of a mighty man, great in deeds. He killed two lion-like men of Moab. He went down also and killed a lion in the middle of a pit in time of snow, or winter. 2 Samuel 23 verse 20 I quickly took my Bible and found it. As I read it, the Holy Spirit told me, Benaiah, who later was numbered among the mighty men of David, and the head of the personal guard of David, did this thing when nobody was watching him. The lion was already in a pit, and it was winter. He could just have left the lion in that pit to die of hunger. Why risk his life to jump down into the pit where he had no way of escape to make sure that he killed that lion? David appointed Benaiah head of his personal guard because he knew that Benaiah was a man who is as bold as a lion like David himself. 
I was greatly emboldened, and that sixtieth night I immediately started the forty days and forty night fast, without food but only drinking water, and completed that on the thirtieth of December two thousand and nine. I know it was not my own strength, but God empowered me. I had just completed sixty days and sixty nights on milk and honey, and straight away did forty days and forty nights fast without food, but only water. I do know it was God, not me. He worked through me, giving me both the willingness and the strength to complete that fast. Philippians 2 verse 13 I did the first six days and six nights without food and without water, and from the seventh day and seventh night to the fortieth day and fortieth night, I did it without food but drinking a lot of water. I remember on the seventh day of that forty days and forty nights fast, a bright cloud entered my bedroom and overshadowed me. I could not move a single finger or toe. I was literally struck to my bed. The experience of Moses when he fasted for forty days and forty nights was recorded for us. Moses went up into the mountain, and a cloud covered the mountain, and the glory of Jehovah abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud, and the sight of the glory of Jehovah was like devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the sons of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud, and went up into the mountain. And Moses was in the mountain forty days and forty nights. Exodus 24 verse 15 to 18 What Moses did was supernatural. God was the one who gave him the supernatural strength to go for forty days and forty nights without food and without water. Jesus, in Matthew 4, when he fasted for forty days and forty nights, drank water. Please, if God calls you to fast forty days and forty nights, drink water, lots of water. God gave me specific instructions during my forty days and forty nights fast. For the first six days and six nights I fasted without water and without food, and from the seventh day and seventh night to the fortieth day and fortieth night, I drank water, lots of water. Do not copy, Brother Jerry. God spoke to me, and the gift of faith of the Holy Spirit was in operation. What Brother Jerry did is miraculous, medically, if a person goes for more than three days and three nights without water, he is hurting himself and his kidneys can be damaged. Do not be stupid to try to prove anything. Do not copy anybody, not even Brother Jerry. God must speak to you. God spoke to Moses to do his fast, and God spoke also to Jerry to do his fast. On the seventh day of my forty days and forty nights of fasting, a bright cloud entered my bedroom and overshadowed me. It stayed on me for a while and was lifted up and disappeared. That bright cloud or fiery cloud is a tangible manifestation of the glory of the Lord. The Jews call it Shekinah glory. It can be like a smoke or any other color God wants it to be. Jesus went with Peter, John, and James on the mountain of transfiguration, where Moses and Elijah appeared to him and talked to him about his passion and the Bible records. While he yet spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Matthew 17 verse 5 the Shekinah glory of God, which is the tangible sign of the presence of God, overshadowed them. It is entirely up to God to tangibly manifest His glory. We are not to seek for it. I was not even seeking for that bright cloud. In fact, I was a bit afraid, because I did not know if God had done that before in the Bible, and as I was reading the Bible, the Holy Spirit showed me that in the Scriptures, and I had peace about it, because I always ask God, where is it in the Bible? 
The other time the Shekinah glory came into my bedroom, I was just praying and fasting for a day. And my mobile phone was on my bedside, and a small bright cloud of the size of the palm of my hand came into my bedroom and overshadowed my mobile phone. And then it lifted up from the phone and disappeared. I did not understand what the meaning of it was. At that time I used to believe that I needed to be present physically to pray for a sick person or the sick person needed to hear my voice over the phone at least to be healed or to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. And the Lord said to me, He sent His word and heals them and delivers them from their pitfalls or destructions. Psalm 107 verse 20 so I understood that even if I send a person a text message, they will be healed as they pray or read the text message, or they receive the baptism of the Spirit as they read that prayer in the text message. Since that day, people have been healed by text messages or by emails. Sister Lynn Giles is a very clever woman. Sometimes when she has a sick person or demon-possessed person, she sends me the prayer request on WhatsApp. Now, WhatsApp allows you to record a message and send it. So, I record the prayer and send it to her. What I did not know is that Lynn Giles was saving my recorded WhatsApp prayers I sent to her. When she could not get hold of me at a very late hour of the night, she would play that recorded prayer saved on her phone to the ears of the demon-possessed person and the demons would come out. And in the morning she tells me what happened when she played my recorded message. God is awesome. I thank Him for the people He has placed in my life and they have introduced me to the limitless power of God even through technology. The gift of faith is also what Joshua manifested when he was fighting the Amorite kings who attacked Gibeon. It is written, Then Joshua spoke to Jehovah in the day when Jehovah delivered up the Amorites before the sons of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still on Gibeon, and moon, stand still in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stood still, until the people had avenged themselves on their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jasher? And the sun stood still in the midst of the heavens, and did not hasten to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that Jehovah listened to the voice of a man. For Jehovah fought for Israel. Joshua 10, verse 12 to 14. Isaiah also displayed the gift of faith and caused the shadow on the sundial to go backward, as it is written. Then came the word of Jehovah to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add to your days fifteen years. And I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And this shall be a sign to you from Jehovah, that Jehovah will do this thing that he has spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the steps which has gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, ten steps backward. So the sun returns ten steps, by which steps it had gone down. Isaiah 38 verse 4 to 8 So both Joshua and Isaiah displayed the gift of faith and dictated to the sun and the moon what they wanted them to do, and the sun and the moon obeyed them. Joel prophesied in our days, after the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus, that God will again perform those miracles. Joel said, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my Spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. 
the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Joel 2 verse 28 to 32 The sun being turned into darkness can be a solar eclipse. Instead of commanding the sun to stand still and the moon to stand still like Joshua commanded in Joshua 10 verse 12 to 14, one will command the sun to stand still and the moon to come and cover the sun. Peter said that the prophecy of Joel started to be fulfilled on the day of Pentecost and is still being fulfilled in our day. Acts 2 verse 14 to 21 God wants us to walk in that same gift of faith Joshua and Isaiah walked in. John tells us in the book of Revelation that the two witnesses will walk in the gift of faith. These two witnesses have power to shut the heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy and they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire. Revelation 11 verse 6 so they have power to display the gift of faith as often as they desire, not as often as God desires. Why? Because God himself said, Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his Maker, Ask me the things to come concerning my sons and daughters, and concerning the works of my hands you command me. Isaiah 45 verse 11 these witnesses know the will of God concerning the sons and daughters of God. They know the ways and reproduce the acts of God like Moses, Joshua, Isaiah and the apostles did. Psalm 103 verse 7 and John 14 verse 6 to 14. Therefore God trusts them with his power and knows that they will not misuse it for their selfish ambitions or because of their anger and hatred, but will use it in the love of God to advance the kingdom of God. The stars, the moon, the sun are the works of God's hands and God is asking us to command him concerning the works of his hands but in line with his love for the people and his will for the people around us. Moses never used that power of God because he hated the Egyptians. As you read the book of Exodus about all the plagues, Moses even prayed for God to take away the plagues from the Egyptians, and God answered him. But Pharaoh and the Egyptians hardened their hearts and caused their own destruction. It is very important that Moses was raised up by Pharaoh's daughter and was the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Acts 7 verse 21, Hebrews 11 verse 24, and Exodus 2. So Moses did not have any hatred for the Egyptians or Pharaoh. He even told the Hebrews after they came out of Egypt, You shall not abhor, which is to hate extremely, an Egyptian because you were a stranger in his land. Deuteronomy 23 verse 7. Some people among the Hebrews might have thought this Moses is not truly one of us. According to the flesh, he's a Hebrew, but he has always been with the Egyptians. He loves them, and even Pharaoh's daughter is his mother. He has never been a slave like us. He does not understand us, and when he married a black wife, even Miriam, his sister, was not happy because his wife was black. Numbers 12 verse 1 they would have said, you see, he was brought up by those black Egyptians, so he only loves black wives and black people. For according to history, Egyptians were black. The Arabs came into North Africa around 600 AD. People might have said, you see, Moses loves those Egyptians. That is why we are still in bondage. Why is it that after he has plagued the Egyptians with a plague, he intercedes again for them, for God to remove that plague from their houses? Why not let the plague destroy all of them? 
Some might have said, I tell you that Moses might be a Hebrew after the flesh, but his heart is for the Egyptians. He has a black wife, a black father-in-law. He loves them. God could not have used one of the Hebrews who were in bondage to save them, because they were filled with bitterness and hatred towards the Egyptians. They would have misused the power of God and would never have interceded for the Egyptians. Yes, sometimes when we use the power of God against the enemy, some stubborn people like Pharaoh and his followers are hurt, but we give them many chances to repent and give their life to Jesus. God does not delight in the death of the wicked, not even of Pharaoh. Ezekiel 18 verse 23 some of us African, Asian, Caribbean Christians who have come to the West to bring the gospel do not genuinely love the indigenous people of the West. We are still frustrated about colonization, about some wars or genocides that some governments of the West have financed in our countries. If, for instance, a born-again Christian who is from Rwanda comes to France and is still bitter and angry about the involvement of the French government in the genocide in his country, if God allows that Christian to walk in the gift of faith, he will most likely plague France with many plagues and rejoice over it. He will call down fire on all of them, command the heavens not to rain, and cause all the farmers to go bankrupt. I hear some prayers of people, and I know they hate homosexuals. We must be able to dissociate between a person and his sins. God hates homosexuality, fornication, adultery, and idolatry. They are all abominations to his eyes, but God so loves homosexuals, fornicators, adulterers, and idolaters. God hates sins, but he so loves sinners. Moses was able to dissociate between the Egyptians and their sins, and Satan who was behind them oppressing the people of God. Moses loved the Egyptians enough to pray for them that God would take away the plagues. If God allows a Christian who hates homosexuals to walk in the gift of faith like Moses or the two witnesses of Revelation, that Christian will most likely ask God to open the earth and swallow all the homosexuals alive straight to hell, like when the earth split open and Dathan and his company were swallowed alive with their possessions into hell. Numbers 16 verse 31 to 35. Yes, that is an example of what will happen to everybody who has not given his life to Christ. They will go to hell. Not just homosexuals, but fornicators, adulterers, idolaters, extortionists, and all unsaved people. But we must do our best to extend the love of God and even pray for all of them, so that they will know how much God so loves them but hates their sins. God does not want anybody to misuse his power. That is why it is crucial to be rooted and grounded in the love of God, to know the love that God has for the world, to understand the perfect redemption plan of God, and to mature in the aspects of the fruit of the Spirit. With the gift of faith, you can control the weather, the sun, the moon, the sea, the wind. Joshua commanded the sun and the moon to stand still until Israel had done what they wanted to do. We were in Glasgow for the inauguration of the New Covenant Church Glasgow. The weather forecast predicted rain for the weekend from Friday to Sunday. We decided to make a declaration to the sky that it would not rain until the program of inauguration of the church ended. People were to come from England to Scotland for those three days, so if it rained, they would not drive up to Scotland. For the three days, it was sunny. Not a drop of rain fell, and as soon as the program was finished on Sunday, and everybody that came from England had left Scotland, at 6 p.m. it started raining heavily. Sister Louise took her children to play rugby, and that day it was supposed to rain. So if it had rained, they might have postponed the game for another day. Her son asked her, Mum, 
Can we pray so that it'll not rain so we can play rugby? You s said in the Bible that Jesus commanded the wind and the waves of the sea, peace be still, and the wind stopped and the sea became calm for them. Mark 4 verse 36 to 41. So Sister Louise prayed with her children and commanded the rain not to fall, and it did not rain. You see, that little child of Sister Louise is already manifesting the gift of faith. Sometimes in Glasgow, I command that it will not rain until I have finished doing my prayer walk and checked into my hotel, and it does not rain. And the moment I check into my hotel, it starts raining. If you are organizing a gospel crusade, command the weather to be favorable to what you are doing. Sometimes the devil will want that day to be a rainy day or a snowy day to prevent people from coming to the venue. So command the weather to be in your favor in Jesus' name. You see, Christians should be commanding the windstorms and the floods to stop, the earthquake to stop. We should not be victims of those things. So, when you hear a forecast report of a windstorm, or earthquake, or flood, or drought, rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and command it to do what is right according to the Scriptures. Read Hebrews 11, and you will have a summary of some of the manifestations of the gift of faith. The two witnesses mentioned in the book of Revelation will also manifest the gift of faith as it is written. These have authority to shut up the heaven, that it may not rain in the days of their prophecy. And they have authority over waters to turn them to blood, and to strike the earth with every plague, as often as they desire. Revelation 11 verse 6 In Exodus 14, Moses also manifested a gift of faith when he lifted his rod to part the Red Sea. To be continued.